On a clear, moonless night, the skies above far west Texas are full of stars, and the Milky Way is an unmistakable, magnificent band across the sky. It's no coincidence that the University of Texas's McDonald Observatory is located here. A clear, dark night sky is crucial to astronomical research, and here at McDonald Observatory, astronomers are using enormous telescopes to study some of the most perplexing and intriguing topics in science today. Outside of far west Texas, views like this are increasingly rare in today's world. Visitors from major cities often have their first views of the Milky Way when they travel to West Texas. In the past, it was safe to assume that if you wanted to see the stars, all you had to do was drive outside of a major city. But now, even in rural areas, hours from major cities, it's no longer safe to assume that the stars at night will be big and bright. The reason is poorly designed outdoor lighting. Seen from space, the Earth's population centers are easy to spot. And while this provides a great view for astronauts, almost all of the light that is visible here is wasted. It's going up into the sky instead of illuminating objects on the ground. In other words, it's light pollution. And light pollution equates to wasted energy and money. According to the US Department of Energy, an estimated 35% of artificial light is wasted by poor lighting practices. And that amounts to about $3 billion worth of electricity per year. All of that wasted light doesn't help you see any better, and it doesn't keep you any safer. In fact, poor lighting actually makes you less safe by creating disabling amounts of glare, harsh shadows where obstacles can hide, and by limiting your eye's natural ability to adapt to dim light conditions. Although more lighting may make you feel safer at night, there is little evidence that supports this feeling despite numerous studies. One study in Chicago compared crime levels before and after increasing lighting in dimly lit alleyways, and found that the additional light was associated with more crimes overall. Most property crimes actually occur during daylight hours, and providing more light at night may actually make it easier for thieves to see targets of value. Increasing light levels is not a strong deterrent for criminals, and poorly designed lights may actually give thieves more areas to hide. The overuse of light at night also has a negative effect on human health. For almost all of history, there was a clear distinction between day and night, and humans have evolved a natural biological clock, our circadian rhythm, which regulates our sleep cycle according to the day and night cycle. But overexposure to artificial lights at night suppresses generation of sleep-inducing melatonin, throwing off our circadian rhythm. This effect is most concerning for blue and white light, and until recently, Large amounts of blue light content was rare or not existent at night, and was only found during the daytime. When blue light is combined with other colors, our eyes perceive it as white, and bright white lights at day and night are now abundant in everyday life. Scientists are now realizing the full effects that blue and white light have on our health. A Harvard study found that by throwing off our circadian rhythm, overexposure to blue light content increases the risk of diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. Our eyes are also not as adept at focusing blue light, which can lead to eye strain. Generally speaking, the older you are, the harder it is for your eyes to focus on blue light sources. Lastly, of particular concern to astronomers, shorter wavelengths of light, like blue light, scatter more in the atmosphere and contribute more to sky glow. It's the same underlying physics behind why the sky is blue in the daytime. The rapid growth of artificial lights at night also has negative consequences for many wildlife species. Like humans, animals may have their sleep cycles disrupted by overexposure to blue light. Predators use light to hunt, and prey species use darkness as cover. But near cities, nighttime skies are hundreds to thousands of times brighter than natural conditions, putting species that need darkness to survive at a huge disadvantage. Even in comparatively dark areas, there are few places left for animals to hide. Migratory birds at are a particularly high risk of being disoriented or distracted by city lights and reflections off of buildings, resulting in hundreds of millions of preventable bird deaths each year. Many different animal species use the stars, moon, or Milky Way to navigate. Artificial lights cause them to navigate themselves into danger instead. 
insects are experiencing an unprecedented decline in population, and important pollinators such as butterflies, bees, and moths have seen dramatic reductions in numbers in the last decade. Although there are multiple reasons for this, one of the main culprits is light pollution. Many insects are drawn to artificial light sources and eventually killed by overheating or exhaustion, and insects are attracted to blue or white lights most of all. Plants are impacted as well. Too much artificial light can disrupt trees' growth rhythms, causing them to hold on to leaves too late into the season and put their survival at risk during winter. Luckily, there are solutions to all of these problems which do not require significant sacrifices. There is, in fact, a win-win solution. Night skies friendly lighting designs are safer, better looking, more environmentally friendly, and more cost-effective than standard designs. There are a few basic principles to night sky friendly lighting design. Shielding, color temperature, intensity, and timing. Let's take a look at these principles in action. A shielded light fixture directs the light down onto the ground, and a well-shielded or full cutoff fixture does not allow any light above the light source. In other words, it isn't possible to see the bulb from above. This keeps light on the ground where it'll help you see. And remember, it's about a dark sky, not a dark ground. Fixtures that let light directly into the sky are wasteful. Shielded fixtures actually provide more light where it is needed, allowing for less energy to be used for the same result. They also minimize glare, which greatly aids in visibility. A shielded light fixture can also keep light within the property lines. Horizontally aimed lights not only waste much of the light they emit, but they also may spill the light off property, much to the frustration of neighbors. As noted earlier, the color of the light is important as well. We want to avoid too much blue light content. The color of the bulb is expressed by the correlated color temperature, which is measured on the Kelvin temperature scale. The higher the temperature, the more blue light there is in the light. We recommend a color temperature of 2700 Kelvin or below, which lighting manufacturers often call soft white or warm white. Nearly all light bulbs sold today will include the correlated color temperature on their packaging. And bulbs with a color temperature of 2700K or below are readily available. This color is easy on the eyes at night and isn't as prone to producing glare. It also won't disrupt your circadian rhythm nearly as much as harsher white or blue tones, but will still allow you to see easily and distinguish objects and colors. The intensity of light is something that is often overlooked or misunderstood. Using more intense light does not necessarily mean you will see any better, as it may simply overwhelm your eye's ability to adapt to ambient conditions, or create too much glare. Only use as much light as is needed to safely see the area. We recommend not exceeding 100,000 lumens per acre. How much is 100,000 lumens per acre? Well, a typical household light may give off a few hundred or so lumens while car headlights are usually around a couple thousand lumens. Most suburban street lights may give off 6,000 to 10,000 lumens. Nearly all light bulbs will say how many lumens they produce on their box or on the bulb itself. Simply add up all the lumens in a given acre, and you have your lumens per acre. In this example of a gas station, the lights are aimed down and are shielded, which is a good start. Unfortunately, the area is severely overlit, clocking in at over 700,000 lumens in an area of far less than an acre. Not only is this a waste of energy, but overlighting is a serious safety concern. As drivers fill up, their eyes adjust to the bright conditions, but when they head back onto the road, their night vision is gone and they're nearly blind. Lastly, if you aren't using a light, simply turn it off or put it on a timer to go off automatically past a certain hour. In far west Texas, lighting ordinances that aim to protect our skies and ecosystems are already in place in seven counties. However, awareness of these ordinances remains low, and in some areas, conflicts exist in the ordinance language. They also need to be updated to reflect changes in technology, particularly regarding LEDs. That is one motivation behind why McDonald Observatory is applying to the International Dark Sky Association, or IDA, to establish an International Dark Sky Reserve 
in the Big Bend region of far west Texas and northern Mexico. An IDA-certified Dark Sky Reserve is a public or private land possessing an exceptional or distinguished quality of starry nights and nocturnal environment. And the Big Bend region is famous for its exceptionally dark skies. This, combined with its dry and clear desert climate, makes it one of the best places in the world to see the stars. By creating this dark sky reserve, we seek to protect the night sky and the fragile ecosystems under it, as well as improve the health and safety of residents. The proposed Greater Big Bend International Dark Sky Reserve encompasses over 17,000 square miles of land, with core zones labeled in green with a black border. These core zones consist of public lands, such as Big Bend National Park and Big Bend Ranch State Park, and others, as well as private lands labeled for conservation. The core zones represent largely natural areas that need the most protection, and are surrounded by the peripheral zones, which include populated areas such as Alpine and Marfa. To protect the sky in the reserve, populated areas will need to update ordinance language and take measures to improve outdoor lighting. The purpose of lighting ordinances is not for strict enforcement, but rather to serve as a vehicle to raise awareness of better lighting practices. We believe that strict enforcement of ordinances is counterproductive. Obtaining status as a dark sky reserve comes with many advantages. Every year, thousands of visitors come to the Big Bend region to see the stars. It's one of the last truly dark areas left in the continental United States. Certification by the IDA will help promote astro-tourism, an important part of the local economy, and ensure it can continue to be a success. The reserve will also help protect important wildlife migration corridors and keep ecosystems healthy. And it will also help protect the sky for scientific research. The night sky in far west Texas is as iconic as the landscape under it. It's part of the identity of the region. It's inspired countless photographers and amateur astronomers, as well as painters and poets. Losing our ability to see the sky would mean losing an important part of our culture, but night sky friendly lighting designs provide a win-win solution. They're safer, better looking, more cost effective, and better for the environment. They're the obvious choice for West Texans.